Good day, this discussion video is intended for Psychology 103N or Theories of Personality. Sigmund Freud once designated Carl Jung as person in line with his theory, but Jung went on to develop a theory of personality that differed dramatically from Freud's psychoanalysis. Jung produced a new and elaborate explanation of human nature quite unlike any other, which he called analytical psychology. One of the first points on which Carl Jung disputed Freud concerned the nature of libido. Jung did not agree that libido was primarily sexual energy. He argued instead that libido was broad, undifferentiated life energy. What's ironic about this theory is that Carl Jung was known to have free and frequently satisfying sexual needs, but he presented the minimal role of sex in human nature. On the other hand, Sigmund Freud was noted to have frustrations and anxiety about his desires or sexual desires, but he presented the central role of sex in human nature. To Carl Jung, libido is a broader and more generalized form of psychic energy that fuels the work of the personality. It is through psychic energy that Psychological activities such as perceiving, thinking, feeling, and wishing are carried out. When a person invests a huge amount of psychic energy in a particular idea or feeling, that idea or feeling is said to have a psychic value and can strongly influence the person's life. For example, if you are highly motivated to attain power, then you will devote most of your psychic energy to seeking power. Carl Jung drew on ideas from physics to explain the functioning of psychic energy. He proposed three basic principles, opposites, equivalence, and entropy. So first, let's tackle about principle of opposites. This principle is sim similar to Newton's contention that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So he noted the existence of opposites in physical energy in the universe. So it is with psychic energy. So in every wish or feeling has its opposite. So as we go along with our topic, you can observe that Carl Jung concepts of personality has its opposites like for example feminine with masculine introversion with extroversion thinking with feeling and sensing with intuiting so we will be discussing it later on next the principle of equivalence so this is the continuing redistribution of energy within a personality so if the energy expended on certain conditions or activities weakens or disappears, that energy is transferred elsewhere in the personality. And lastly, the principle of entropy. So this is the tendency toward balance or equilibrium within the personality. The ideal is an equal distribution of psychic energy overall structures of the personality in carl jung's view the total personality or psyche is composed of several distinct systems or structures that can influence one another so the major systems are the ego the personal unconscious and the collective unconscious so if you differentiate it from freud's the structure of personality is the id ego and superego then its levels are the conscious preconscious and unconscious so for this let's focus more on carl jung's systems of personality 
first the ego so the ego is the center of consciousness so it's the part of the psyche concerned with perceiving thinking feeling and remembering so it is our awareness of ourselves and is responsible for carrying out the normal activities of waking life so the ego is selective in a way that only admits a portion of the stimuli to which we are only exposed to and bring it into our conscious awareness so carl jung presented two opposing mental attitudes the extroversion and introversion so extroverts are known to be open sociable and socially assertive and then they're also oriented toward other people and the external world introverts on the other hand are withdrawn and often shy and they tend to focus on themselves on their own thoughts and feelings so according to carl jung everyone has the capacity for both attitudes but only one becomes dominant in the personality so the dominant attitude tends to direct the person's behavior and consciousness so for the non-dominant attitude it still remains influential and becomes part of the personal unconscious where it can still affect or affect rather one's uh, behavior so for example in certain situations an introverted person may display characteristics of extroversion from time to time no and sometimes they wish to be more outgoing or to be att attracted no to persons with ha having an extrovert uh, personality as carl jung came to recognize that there were different kinds of extroverts and introverts which was presented on my previous slide carl jung proposed additional distinctions among people based on what he called the psychological functions so carl jung introduced the four functions of the psyche which are the sensing intuiting thinking and feeling so sensing and intuiting are grouped as non-rational functions so they do not use the processes of reason these functions accept experiences and do not evaluate them so sensing reproduces an experience through the use of our senses intuiting does not arise directly from our uh, external stimulus you now for example if we believe someone else is with us in a darkened room our belief may be based on our intuition or a hunch rather than on actual sensory experience so the second pair of opposing functions is the thinking and feeling so these are rational functions that involve making judgments and evaluations about our experiences so even though that thinking and feeling are opposites both are concerned with organizing and categorizing experiences so the thinking function involves a conscious judgment of whether an experience is true or false so for the feeling it evaluates in terms of like or dislike or pleasantness or unpleasantness or for the stimulation or dullness so just what i have mentioned earlier is that we both have the capacity in gaining both characteristics of attitudes of extroversion and introversion but it just happened that there's a dominant attitude in us for the psychological functions similarly only one function is dominant it is either rational or irrational and with in each pair only one function is dominant so based on this theory a person cannot have both thinking and feeling or both sensing and intuiting because they are opposing functions Carl Jung proposed eight psychological types based on 
the interactions of the two attitudes and four functions. No? So the extroverted thinking type lives strictly following society's rules. So these people tend to repress feelings and emotions, to be objective in all aspects of life and to be opinionated in thoughts. The extroverted feeling type tends to repress the thinking mode and to be highly emotional. So these people conform to the traditional values and moral codes they have been taught ever since they were uh, still kids. They are emotionally responsive and make friends easily and they tend to be sociable and effervescent. Carl Jung believed no, this, that this type was found more often among women than men. The extroverted sensing type focuses on pleasure and happiness and on seeking new experiences. So these people are strongly oriented toward the real world and are adaptable to different kinds of people and changing situations. So the extroverted intuiting type finds success in business and politics because of a keen ability to exploit opportunities. So these people are attracted by new ideas and tend to be creative. And then they can also inspire others to accomplish and achieve something. The introverted thinking type does not get along well with others and has difficulty uh, communicating their ideas. These people focus on thoughts rather than on feelings and have poor practical judgment. The introverted feeling type represses rational thought. So these people are capable of deep emotion but avoid any outward expression of it they seem mysterious and inaccessible and tend to be quiet modest and childish the introverted sensing type appears passive calm and detached from the everyday world these people look at most human activities with benevolence and amusement they are aesthetically sens sensitive sensitive no expressing themselves in art or music and tend to repress their intuition and lastly the introverted intuiting type focuses so intently on an intuition that they have little contact with reality these people are visionaries and daydreamers they are aloof unconcerned with practical matters and poorly understood by others The personal unconscious in Carl Jung's system is similar to Freud's conception of the preconscious. It is a reservoir or a container of one's conscious, but it is now forgotten or suppressed because it was trivial or disturbing for the person. There is considerable two-way traffic between the ego and the personal unconscious. So, for example, our attention can wander with, uh, readily from the words we see on our screens as of this moment and we can shift our attention from a certain memory of something we did yesterday like for example lang. so all kinds of experiences are stored in the personal unconscious it is somehow similar to the idea of filing cabinet wherein there's only a little mental effort that is required when we want to take something from our memory then examine it for a while and shift to our current and real-time experiences so the memory is just there no there there uh, until the next time you want it or we want to be reminded of it then we'll just shift back to that certain memory so as we file more and more experiences in our personal unconscious we begin to group them into what Carl Jung called complexes. So a complex is a core or pattern of emotions, memories, perceptions, and wishes 
organized around a common theme. So, for example, we might say that a person has a complex about power or status, meaning that that person is preoccupied with that concept since that person has more experiences about power and status and this could lead to influencing one's behavior so as a result the person may try to become powerful by running for elective office or seeks for higher positions in terms of like a certain job so by directing thoughts and behavior in various ways the complex determines how the person perceives the world. The last system of personality, according to Carl Jung, is the collective unconscious. So this is the deepest and least accessible level of the psyche. This is also the most unusual and controversial aspect of Carl Jung's system. So Carl Jung believed that we store the experiences of the human and pre-human species in the collective unconscious, which is passed to each new generation. So whatever experiences that are universal and are repeated relatively unchanged by each generation will become part of our personality. Our primitive past becomes the basis of the human psyche, directing and influencing our present behavior. So to Carl Jung, the collective unconscious was the powerful and controlling repository of ancestral experiences. It was mentioned that Carl Jung's patients would share their dreams and fantasies and it happened that when these were being described by his clients, it is similar to symbols that um that he had discovered in ancient cultures so carl jung at that time was confused why his clients are sharing these symbols no they are describing these symbols during uh, therapies when in fact these symbols are not common or present in that specific area so therefore at that time carl jung concluded that probably these symbols that were being described by uh, his clients were transmitted by and carried in in each person's unconscious mind from their ancestral experiences archetypes are the ancient experiences contained in the collective unconscious that is manifested by recurring themes or patterns Carl Jung proposed the ma major archetypes. So these major archetypes are said to have an influence on our psyche, which can affect one's dreams and fantasies. So first is the persona. So the persona archetype is a mask, a public face we wear to present ourselves as someone different from who we are. The persona is necessary since Carl Jung believed that this archetype is needed because we are forced to play many roles in our daily lives just to succeed in school or in a, on our jobs and, and so that we can get along with a variety of people. The anima and animus archetype refer to Carl Jung's recognition that we humans are essentially bisexual. So this means that on the psychological level each sex manifests characteristics and attitudes of the other sex so the psyche of the woman contains masculine aspects which is the animus archetype and the psyche of the man contains feminine aspects which is the anima archetype for example if you are a woman there are also characteristics from the opposite sex that are present within ourselves in guiding our behavior. So Carl Jung insisted that both the anima and the animus must be expressed. So a man must exhibit his feminine side as well as his masculine characteristics. And at the same time, for the woman, a woman must also express her masculine characteristics along with her feminine ones. 
Otherwise, these vital aspects will remain dormant and undeveloped, leading to the one-sidedness of the personality. Next is the shadow. So this is the most powerful archetype uh, that Carl Jung proposed. The shadow contains the basic primitive animal instincts and therefore has the deepest roots of all the archetypes. Behaviors that society considers evil and immoral reside in the shadow and this dark side of human nature must be tamed if people are to live in harmony. And lastly, the self archetype. Uh, the self archetype represents the unity, integration, and harmony of the total personality. So, to Carl Jung, striving toward the wholeness is the ultimate goal of life. This archetype involves bringing together and balancing all parts of the personality. So Carl Jung proposed that personality is determined by what we hope to be as well as by what we have been. So he criticized uh, Sigmund Freud for emphasizing only past events as shapers of personality to the exclusion of the future. For Carl, for Carl Jung, he believed that we develop and grow regardless of age and are always moving toward a more complete level of self-realization. So the ego begins to develop in early childhood and at this stage, the child has not yet formed a unique identity and it is more than a reflection of the personalities of his or, or her parents. So the parents do have a great influence on the formation of the child's personality during this uh during this stage so it's up to them if they can enhance or disrupt uh, the personality development by the way they behave towards the child so it is not until pu puberty that the psyche assumes a definite form and content so this period which carl jung called is a psychic birth so childhood fantasies must end as the adolescent confronts the demands of reality. From the teenage years through young adulthood, we are concerned with preparatory activities such as completing our education, beginning a career, getting married, and starting a family. So life aims to achieve our goals and establish a secure, successful place for ourselves in the world. So during the young adulthood, uh, there should be an exciting and challenging time filled with new horizons and accomplishments. During middle age, major personality changes occur between the ages of 35 and 40. So this period of middle age was a time of personal crisis. So the typical 40 year old a uh, man is established, man or woman, is established in a career, a marriage, and a community. Carl Jung asked why when success has been achieved, so many people that that certain age group, you no, know, around 40s, you no, know, he asked why so many people at that particular age group is gripped by feelings of despair and worthlessness uh, during their uh, their sessions no the, his pair uh, his patients all told him essentially the same thing they felt empty so adventure excitement and zest had disappeared at that uh, group age age group rather age group so at the middle age we must begin the process of realizing or actualizing the self. So if we are successful in integrating the unconscious with the conscious, we are in a position to attain a new level of positive psychological health, which is uh, Carl Jung considered as the individuation.
individuation involves becoming an individual, fulfilling one's capacities, and developing one's self. The tendency toward individuation is innate and inevitable, but it will be helped or hindered by environmental forces such as one's educational and economic opportunities and the nature of the parent-child relationship. To strive for individuation, middle-aged persons must abandon the behaviors and values that guided the first half of their life and listen to their dreams and follow their fantasies exercising creative imagination through writing painting or some other form of, of expression so they must let themselves be guided not by the rational thinking that drove them before but by the spontaneous flow of the unconscious only in that way can the true self be revealed so once the psyche's structures are individuated and acknowledged the next developmental stage can occur so carl jung referred to this as transcendence so this is an innate tendency toward unity or wholeness in the personality uniting all the opposing aspects within the psyche environmental factors such as unsatisfactory my marriage or frustrating uh, work can inhibit the process of transcendence and prevent the full achievement of the self. So there are three basic techniques that Carl Jung used to evaluate personality. Uh, the following are the word association test, uh, symptom analysis, and dream analysis. There is also a widely used self-report personality test, the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, which was developed to assess Carl Jung's psychological types. So first, let's tackle about the word association test. So this is a test in which a subject responds to a stimulus word with whatever word comes immediately to mind. Uh, this has become a standard laboratory and clinical tool in psychology. For the symptom analysis, this technique focuses on the symptoms reported by the patient and attempts to interpret the patient's free associations to those symptoms. Then, uh, dream analysis, wherein is it's a technique involving the interpretation of dreams to uncover unconscious conflicts. For Carl Jung, he is more concerned about the causes of dreams. And lastly, the MBTI or the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. It is an assessment instrument, instrument rather, uh, related to Carl Jung's personality theory, which is developed by Catherine Cook Briggs and Isabel Briggs Myers. This is an assessment test based on Carl Jung's psychological types and the attitudes of introversion and extroversion. So you can search that one on the internet on how uh, the MBTI works. Carl Jung made several important and lasting contributions to psychology. The word association test became a standard projective technique and inspired the development of the Rorschach inkblot test and so-called lie detection techniques. The concepts of psychological complexes of introverted versus extroverted personalities are widely accepted in psychology today. The personality scales that measure introversion and extroversion are standard diagnostic and selection devices. A great deal of research is being conducted on the introversion-extroversion personality dimensions. In the following chapters, we see evidence of Jung's influence on the work of other theorists. Carl Jung's notion of individuation or self-actualization anticipated the work of Abraham Maslow and other personality theorists. Despite the significance of these formulations, the bulk of Jung's theory was not received enthusiastically by psychologists. 
one reason concerns the difficulty of understanding Jungian's concepts. So Sigmund Freud, Alfred Adler, and others wrote in a clear style that allows their books to be easily read and understood. So Jung did not write for the general public. So research has supported Jung's ideas on attitudes, functions, and psychological types, but broader aspects of his theory have resisted attempts of scientific validation. His work has had considerable influence in several fields. Widely accepted Jungian's ideas include the word, association test, complexes, introversion, extroversion, self-actualization, and the midlife crisis. So I hope that uh, you've learned something from this topic and if you have questions or clarifications, you may contact me on my UB Facebook account. Thank you for your attention.